Life would be so much easier if good things happened to good people and bad things happened to bad people. Instead, we discover that we all fall short of God's glory. No one exempt, is exempt from the effects of evil and Satan's temptations. Even Jesus Christ himself repeatedly encountered evil in Mark chapter 1 and Luke chapter 4. The worst kinds of evil touched Jesus' lives. Yet he, he was our weakness he carried. It was our sorrow that weighed him down. And we, through his troubles, were a punishment from God for his for our own sins upon him. But he was wounded and crushed for our sins. He was beaten that we might have peace. He was whipped and we were healed. Amen. By God's goodness, we can be rescued from every evil for eternity. You see, what it comes down to is that you and I as believers must become <coughs> points of light. We have to become the points of light. You see, I really believe the biggest problem in Chester is the fact that there are people that are tragically train wrecks of lives that have absolutely empty no hope. They have no hope. They have no reason to live. People who have no reason to live, that is how evil permeates itself. If you have no hope, what hope do you have to do any good? 36% of the people in this congressional district go to bed hungry every night. If you are hungry, if you have no job, if you have no ability to pay bills, if you have no ability to do anything good, and you're already bad and sinful, the natural outcome is more evil. We are in need of complete transformation of the human soul from the inside and out, and that it comes from the inside out in our community. Lee Strobel tells a story that he and his wife were out in Wisconsin in an area called Door County on Route 42. And they were traveling in a heavy rainstorm and all of a sudden they hit this dense fog bank. And I've driven out in Missouri and places like that where you get in those mountains where you drive down into and all of a sudden you can't see your hand in front of your face. It's so dense and fog. But they decided in the midst of this fog that it was safer to keep going than pull over around the side of the road. Because if they pulled off the side of the road, they were surely going to get hit. And then it happened. In the middle of nowhere, they saw the taillights of a large truck. Hmm. And he was making incredible progress. And they could see his beams out in front of the truck. So they, they pulled in behind this truck and they followed him through this, through this whole fog bank. And they got out to the other side safely. Because they kept to the points of light that helped direct them in a straight path through the trouble. You and I must be that way to the world. You and I must be that way to our friends and our family or hurting, people that are struggling, people that are in our community, the situations that are negative out there. We have to become points of light where they see the fact that even though we were ourselves in the midst of problems, midst of hurt, midst of pain, midst of suffering, midst of sin, that we have hope in our heart and we love because God loved us. So how do we do this? Here's the thing. <clears throat> the thought of pain and suffering presents challenges to your Christian faith. John 16, 33 says this of Jesus. And this is the first point. The world, as Jesus predicted, it says this in John 16, 33. I have said these things to you. In me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Take heart, I have overcome the world. Amen. You and I have to realize that we're living in the world that Jesus predicted. That it is going to be tribulation. There is there's going to be bad days in your life. Stuff is going to happen. Yes, you are a sinner. You're saved by grace. But yes, you, as Paul said, I struggle with the bonds, this, the bondage of my life sometimes. But the simple fact is Jesus said, focus on me for I have overcome the world. The second thing that we have to see that evil was not created or caused by God. God created human beings so they could truly love and follow him. To be human. Now here's, here's this, some of the boundaries of love. You have to understand to be human means to be able to truly love is the ability to go the other way. To not follow and to not love God. Adam and Eve made the choice and since that time it has been repeated down through the human race. All the way to you and me and the friends we hope to reach. If we did not have the ability to love, we would be robots or go through the motions. If real love was that way, then we would be unable to express the real thing of love. 
Love can never be forced. That idea of a forced love is really an oxymoron. It's a contradiction of terms. Either it's forced or it's love. You can't have both real love and love freely chosen. Norman Geisler explains that since God is love, he cannot force himself on anyone against his will. Forced love is not love, it's rape. God created us as free beings, thus created us for this potential for evil. In, um, in Ezekiel 28, I'm just going to read some of this, but th this, this is a picture of how Satan turned, turned in his ultimate rebellion against, uh, uh, against, uh, against God. And the word of the Lord came to me and said, Son, say this to the prince of Tyre, that the Lord, Lord says you're God, because your heart is proud, and you have said, I am God. I sit in the seats of the gods and the, and the hearts of the seas, yet you are but a man to know God. You make your heart like the heart of a god. You indeed rise, or, or you are indeed wiser than Daniel. No secret is hidden from you, but by your wisdom and your understanding, you have made wealth uh, for yourself and have gathered gold and silver into your treasuries. By your own great wisdom, your trade, you have increased your wealth, and your heart has become proud of your wealth. And thus the Lord God says, God, you have made your heart like the heart of a god. Yet, behold, I will bring foreigners upon you. And, and, and most ruthless of nations, and they shall draw the swords against the beauty of your wisdom and defy your splendor, and thus, thus thrust you down into the pit, and you shall die the death of the slain in the heart of the seas. And I will say, and you will say, I am a God, and in the presence of those who kill you, though you are but a man and no God, in the hands of those who slay you, you shall die the death of the uncircumcised by the hands of the foreigners, for I have spoken and declared this our God. You see, the God who... who this God who proceeded with creation because he knew what would, would be the greater good to come, including the fact that many of us would turn around and go against the typical human rebellion in order to follow him. You see, we were free to choose to follow God. God is not putting these superimposed terms over you and saying, you will worship me or die. No, God is saying, you have the freedom to choose. And in that freedom, some have chosen not. And by choosing not, Rebellion entered, wickedness entered, evil entered, thus all the effects upon all of us.